Thank you for joining us. This is Health Your Own Way Podcast, and I'm your host, Mo Atkins. Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be discovering the importance of personal finance to your marriage well-being. And my guests are John and Karen Yates. They're both financial alignment coaches. So I'm really excited to have this conversation because I feel like finance is, you know, it's important. And I think health-wise in respects to, you know, depression, you know, happiness is a conversation a lot of people don't have. So I want to say thank you both for joining me. Anything you guys want to add before we start? Uh, well, thank you so much for having us, first of all. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> but the one thing I would really add to in regards to health about finances is a lot of times finances or problems with finances cause a lot of stress personal stress as well as stress on the relationship. And so that is really something that we love to address and and get to the root of that problem so that you don't have that additional stress in your life because goodness knows there's enough going on in your life that you don't need to be worrying about money all the time. I appreciate you saying that. And I'm really glad it's both of you guys because again, when you have a conversation like this, it's usually one person and then you sometimes you don't get the other side of the view. So, you know, John, because it's fair enough, you guys are both married, right? Like I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we are a married couple. <laughs> so you guys are both married. So you guys have an understanding of, you know, what's worked for you, what has not worked for you. And you understand, you know, as you said, it affects your health. Like if, if you have a lot of stress, based on money and stuff like that, how does that affect your relationship with one of each other, I guess, I guess together, as well as your external, maybe your siblings or your kids. So this is a great conversation a lot of people should be having. That's how I feel, hence why you guys are here today. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, all right, so let's start. Now, I really, the reason why I wanted to have this conversation is because people don't agree with me. I think that finance is high, and I wanted to know, you know, from your, from both of your, opinion why is personal finance why is you taking personal i'm sorry why is it that taking personal accountability your finance is essential when you're getting married or before when you're getting married do you understand where i'm going with this question yeah yeah and i think um you know so when you are talking finances or it comes up and a lot of times it doesn't even come up what the way it comes up is in conflict and you don't know how to deal with it you don't know how to handle it because all of us have never grown up talking about money. So it's this new issue when you come in contact with your future or current spouse that you have this conflict or, and it just creates all this stress. And so having the conversation, um, the way we start with our clients is we, we make it super simple. And I'd like to share that with you guys, with you, is that when you're having or when something comes up or even if you want to start the conversation about having your own money story. And what I mean by your money story is how you personally grew up in your own family with money, how it was presented, how it wasn't presented, what stresses did your family go through, what um, successes did your family have. And so there's all those different pieces that take place in your own personal story. And I guarantee it doesn't match up with your other part. <laughs> and so for the, so for them to share their money story, and it's very simple. It's, you know, out to dinner and say, hey, let me hear your money story. And you kind of get to know each other even more so, and you get to know about their family and how they grew up. And that money concept in their minds is powerful when you come together and try to create those goals together. So, you know, just a quick example of somebody grew up with a family who used credit cards all the time. Um, well, that's normal for them. And it might be super scary for the other person going, what in the world is going on here? If they grew up with all cash and never even dreamed of using a credit card. So those two things, we assume that the other person understands where we're coming from. And so when you have this simple conversation about understanding each other's growing up, it just kind of uh, brings you together more and it reduces the stress about having to deal with any conflict. You know, the conflicts are no longer because now you understand you're coming from a place of understanding. I 100% agree with you. I think from my experience and maybe others, it's a lot of people um, have bad financial history. You know, when you're in university, your college, you get that first credit card, and you, it, you go shopping or you get that financial loan and you just spend it all. That. So a lot of people I've met like in their early 20s or, you know, they're in debt. And then having that conversation with your significant other can be embarrassing. 
or you have that belief that you know you're young life will get there i don't need to save money or you just have bad habits so i find that i like what you said having the money story but i feel like to get to that point a lot of people have to be mature enough to want to have that conversation is that fair to say absolutely absolutely because the other point that a lot of times there's conflict but the other thing that we see a lot is avoidance where people just don't want to talk about money and so they intentionally avoid it and it leads to the same problem when you don't talk about money with your spouse your future spouse you can't get aligned and get together on your goals and so you don't reach them certainly not as quickly as you possibly could but oftentimes you don't reach them at all because you're going in two different directions and if you don't talk about them you never get to the same point i 100 percent agree with you and i think if we're, i'm going to give you an example from my relationship um i've come from as you said you know your money history right um i was raised by a single father um i i think i moved so many times without we running away from the cops because <laughs> just because you know financial situations right and um, i know what it's like to have no money and stuff like that so i've never been a big credit card spender um, granted, at one point, you know, when you were young, you got that card and you spent. So where I'm going with this is I have no problem working hard and saving money to hit a goal. My significant other at one point didn't see a future. So he every money was just that money. Right. And then he didn't see. So I think you um, get to get you get to get to my point of view because it wasn't working. With his point of view was not working. I'm going to be honest. So you have to come to my level of point of view. So he came there. He had no choice. Be serious. And um, what I mean by that is that I want a future. So I think, you know, having that story and having that somebody realize, okay, you know what, there's a possibility to save money. There's a possibility to uh, help out because what that does is when you're in line with that person, then as you mentioned, you can move forward and you, your health and your perspective of your marriage or your significant other future is a lot yeah. better you can, and you can do more. I, that's how I see it. Yeah, Absolutely. Something exactly. Oh, no, that's exactly <laughs> right. And so people don't realize it because we're just kind of, we're just kind of going in our own lane, you know, and you never, once you come together on, you know, our, unfortunately, our society and our world is built on money. Yeah. And so once we figure it out together, then you have, you know, I always say one plus one is way more than two, infinitely more than two. Oh, and so when you have you and your other half that come together, it is no longer two, it is infinitely more. And so the, everything comes together, the goals, the progress, the savings, the, the happiness, it just happens because you're in alignment and it just makes things better. I don't know how else so to say it. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. So then what do you say to those people that don't have that significant other that would not come to their point of view? Mine had no choice, but some don't have choice. <laughs> but, you think I'm joking? You had no choice. <laughs> but I'm saying like, um, what do you tell to those people? Because I feel like if you're going to get in a relationship and you want it to be healthy and surviving, you don't want to be part of that divorce rate. Like finances is huge. So if that person's not understanding your money story or understanding that they have to come in line with a healthy financial personal accountability, what are the steps that you teach your clients to move um, to aid that significant other or move from being stuck in that viewpoint to the next stage? Do you understand where mm -hmm. I'm going with this question? Right. Absolutely. And so two people don't have to be expressly absolutely in the same lane as far as, you know, savings or spending. It's very, very common where you find one's partner is more of the spender and one is more of the saver. And that is fine. What's not fine is not discussing it okay. and not discussing the plans and the goals. And so it's really what we work with our clients with is really getting super clear on what they want, what each of them want individually, and then what they want together as a couple. And there's plenty of people that have different lives, you know, that they don't do everything together. And so, you know, for instance, the husband might really enjoy fishing and the wife despises it. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too. He doesn't like fishing, but you know, there's, <laughs> there's plenty of couples, you know, she might really enjoy shoes and it's not his thing, right? And and that is okay. You do not have to be absolutely, you know, 100% together on every single decision. But what we really coach people on is getting that main, that big goal, having that goal be the same for the two 
for both partners because then you know the the smaller things they don't matter you know he buys a new fishing reel you buy a new pair of shoes it's okay in the long run but if you know i'm consistently buying shoes after shoes after shoes and you know going through all of our extra money well now it's a problem and that problem gets resolved really through discussions and so it's not about we have to agree we just have to agree on the big picture of where we're going so I'm going to make it a little difficult for you. So I see on social media sometimes where there's certain people that don't want to work. They just want to spend money, you know, and then, you know, those kind of people like, so if someone is in a relationship with someone that just feels like they need to just be taken care of, they don't want to worry about the money. They just want to spend. How do you then have that conversation conversation with that person that just sees money as their needs only, and then they deserve to be taken care of that aspect. And you don't have, and their money is their money, and that person's money is their money. Is that you know what this question? Is? Yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's I don't know it's a, let it's me get clear on this. I, I know John, it's not helping. Go ahead. I know it's not helping. Go ahead. So, so I think what you're seeing, or what how we could help somebody like that in that situation, would be that you know we always come back in our holistic approach is getting on the same page in one sense or another. And if there's a conflict, um, and it can be a silent conflict where things are just kind of building up underneath the surface, that you know things might seem really good on the surface, but underneath this slow, long burn um, builds up. And so to clear that out, you know, we always go back to having a conversation. And you say, well, maybe you have to be mature enough to have that conversation. And that's that's partially correct, but I think the more, you know, you can be a subtle spy to your significant other in digging out their money story. You don't have to say, okay, honey, we're going to talk about money now and tell me about your money story. No, you can be sly and you can dig out that story. So what did you do when you were a kid? What, did, what happened when this happened? What did you, where did you go on vacation? You can find out all these things of information. And then once you have all the information, now you can present your own money story and now you can compare that to their money story because you have it all and so you compare these two money stories and so once you get clear on on each other's upbringing because we learn things from age five and up you know five years old we're learning about how our families dealt with money so it's a long-term thing we're in our 20s or 30s and you've spent the last 20 25 years having this knowledge of when you were five and so it doesn't make sense anymore and so now that we've grown into adults we need to take an adult approach we can change our past money story and create our own new money story and so for those people who just want to just want to take the trick is them understanding their money story because then they will know where they want to go do you want to remain where you were or do you want to go to where you want to go which is your own future. And if they decide that they want to go into their own future, then I think they'll be able to start creating some of those goals, creating some of those lifestyle changes. Um, it's, you know, there's no easy answer to that, Mo, and there's no easy, there's no easy fix. You know, one of our stories is Karen and I, you know, when we were at our low point in our marriage and really things were either left or right and we chose right, so we had, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and weeks and months of conversation and it turned everything around. And so when you get to that level of, you know, what is it deep down when, when you're ready to step off the cliff, do you step off or do you, do you run? And so you have to have that conversation and it's not easy. Oh, I know it's not easy. I appreciate you saying that because you're right. There is, I did ask you a question that can't be answered because it, again, it, when it comes down to it, it's that person's responsibility to want to change or even accept or have that conversation with the other person. And I like what you mentioned, how you don't really have to sit down and have a physical conversation. You can really just start taking cues. And I think I've done that. And I think I knew I did, I did that because sometimes you're sitting there and like, this doesn't make sense. So you start asking questions like, how did you do this when you were younger? Like you just start, you do your own investigations and you're right. I, I knew I had his money story before I asked him. I really did because I'm very, you also like if you've ra been raised, I remember when you said you were five, if you've been raised a certain way, you understand your family's history of money. 
sometimes you don't, not sometimes but if you it's a good if it's a good experience you don't want to repeat the same mistakes your parents did right, right. so i right. didn't want to do that and i'm not saying my dad or my family didn't do the best they can, like they can but what you do is you try to learn and try yeah. to improve because the next generation you want to make sure that you can give further and get farther you don't want to be repeating the same kind of mistakes that your family member has done that with that said you know, I know you mentioned that you do coach people. You know, if people were interested in learning more about what you guys offer for your service, what's the best platform to reach you guys on? Sure. So the easiest way is probably through our website, which is inspiremymoney.com. All one word, inspire my money. Uh, we're also on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn. And so we can give you those links so you can share them with everyone. Um, and we're always happy to connect and, and really help people out because it really is a core fundamental belief of ours when we kind of came out of our mess and went on our journey, we, we looked back at it and we said, wow, like we have to help other people. Like this is something that we struggled through, that we, we stumbled and we, we fell and, and we got back up and we tried again and we tried again and we kept going at it until we got it. So we got to where we could easily converse about money. I mean, we're talking, we were 20 years into our relationship and we had never talked about money. <laughs> not, not, what we, what not what we want for the people that we work with, for our clients. You know, we want everybody to be able to have that conversation because it's so much more powerful when you do come together. So that really became a passion of ours to really work with other couples to help them not have to spend all of that time and struggle and fail that many, as many times as we did. I like that because I was actually going to ask you as initially, what was your passion and why you do this? And, you know, I like the way you said that. And then even when you mentioned that, you know, I think of people that, are, you know, very like in your 20s, you're like, you're happy, your 30s, you have kids. And as your kids start leaving, like, or even then your significant other, you've never really had that conversation about money. When you start having that conversation, you know, in your 40s, your 50s, you don't really want to start having that conversation because you're about to be, you're about to retire. You really should know what's in your bank account and what you want to do. So. Luckily enough, I'm not going to age myself. I'm getting close to 40. I'm getting really close to 40 <laughs> next year, but you know. So at that point, I'm not trying to have that conversation within my 50s. I'm trying to have that conversation now and earlier. So I appreciate you saying that. So for anybody, you know, watching and listening, I think what John and Karen are saying is that, you know, they've been there, right? They know it's hard, right? They've, they've learned certain skill sets and resources, and they're offering that to you. And I think at this current stage with divorce rate being high and, you know, finance and money being one of the key factors of being um, in a bad relationship. And, you know, let me step back, especially even with COVID-19 that happened, a lot of people were stuck together, you know, stuck together. And then, you guys, am I wrong? Like, you, now you, money's oh. a factor, right? Oh, absolutely. You're totally right. And divorce, this, the number two reason for divorce is actually financial conflict. So it is very, very high up there. And it's it's just so common and it doesn't have to be and that's really what we're all about is finding that common ground because we find that even when people are very different when couples are very different they might have think that they have very different goals when we start digging down to the base of their goals so so often they are actually very very similar i'm hoping so i'm hoping so <laughs> <laughs> Like I to even go back to the COVID nineteen part, I know a lot of people um have lost jobs, and they've been some some haven't discussed financial concepts, and some you know have been fortunate enough that you know they've been able to save right. So there's two sides to the story, and it's more like okay, have you discussed the extra money that you have? What are you going to do, and how are you going to use that for possible retirement or paying off your bills? Or even then, if you're living on paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, or you're getting that government assistance. How are you using that money to help you further? And I think what you guys are saying is that in either set of situation, we're here to help you and help you get that money story that you both can determine and move forward. I'm getting, this is what I understand so far from you guys, right? Yes, exactly. See, I'm listening, so, you guys. I'm listening. Uh, <laughs> what I say. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to keep you guys long. I think before I let you guys know, sorry, before I let you guys go, anything you want to add or say that you want to share to the audience before we depart today? No, I think, you know, the biggest piece is that we've been there. Um, you know, we went through our our early marriage and, and beyond just kind of assuming, and I, like we all do, we just assume that we're going to make it to retirement and get there and everything's going to work out and be fine. And in the meantime, we just kind of struggle along. And so we kind of got 
20 years down the road and said, what are we doing? We have zero in the bank account. We're about to get divorced. What needs to happen? And so once you figure out how to come together, the finances come together and things just take off. And so, you know, a quick story is within a year we had a, within one year, we had one year's worth of savings to travel the world. And so (laughs) things went from zero to, you know, cha-ching. And so it, it changes. We didn't get an inheritance. We didn't win the lotto. We just rearranged our situation and our, our life's money coming in to make things happen. And so that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, and that's yeah. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing that I would add is, you know, it's not too late. Right. Like we were not in our 20s. We were not in our 30s. <laughs> we were older than that. And, you know, we came to this point. Where we said, oh, something has to change here. Something really has to change. And so we made that change. And so I would just like to encourage anyone listening that, you know, it's not too late to do this. And it's not too late to go after your dreams. Like you don't have to wait for this someday. Hopefully, maybe in retirement, hopefully we'll be able to do this. Like you can actually work towards that right now and have it happen much sooner than you think. Oh, thank you both. I truly enjoy this conversation because I think it's needed. And I think a lot of people choose to not have this conversation or don't know how to. So the mere fact that you, I love the first part where you're understanding your money story. So again, we are going to have your details in um, the video itself in respect to how to reach you as well in the show notes. So anybody that's really struggling or, or even want to have that conversation, please reach out to Mr. and Mrs. Yates. And they're there to help you. Have awesome. a good day, you guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Mel. We're glad to have you join us. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, share with anyone that needs to be empowered and inspired. And don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of Health Young Way Podcast. Have a good day, you guys.